Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday, even though we're filming this on a Tuesday. But as you guys know, by the time this airs, I will be out of town. So thank you so much, Stephanie, for agreeing to do some pre filming with me because everyone loves a good tarot card reading and everyone loves Stephanie. So um, again, if you don't know who Stephanie is, is, if you're living under a rock, this is Stephanie from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening. So I will be obviously placing all of her links down in the description box below, including her email if you would like to book a tarot card private tarot card reading with her now disclaimer i heard you say this on your video today uh stephanie and i absolutely know how this feels you are getting bombarded with emails aren't you i got slammed i i uh told um i asked david zublik on the dark outpost if i could put my information out there for private readings well i have a couple hundred to go through yes so yeah. just be patient guys um i know Ste stephanie and I are friends off of camera. So I know what her day is like, and she knows what my day is like. We are literally a one-stop shop. We do everything for both of our channels. And I only have to worry about my channel. And I teach one day a week outside of my home, but Stephanie is running groups on top of that. She's also a mom. So please be patient. If you've uh, emailed Stephanie, just be patient um, and she will definitely get back to you when, when she can, she's not ignoring you. So just be patient. I know what that's like to get slammed with emails and honestly, no one's being ignored. It's just, it is what it is because we are what we're both individually doing our channels. So um, just be patient with her one day. I foresee it in the future, Stephanie, one day you will have a whole administration crew behind you to help you with this. But until now it is just us doing our thing and we're going to have some fun today, guys. We're going to do, we're going to pull some cards on some subjects that I've covered on other channels before. Now, before we get into some of the subjects I've, I've covered on other channels, some of these global mysteries, I wanted to briefly touch on a subject I covered a long time ago <laughs> at the beginning when I first started my my YouTube channel. This was one of my original videos that got big. And this was the video I did over Somerset fell off. Now this video did eventually end up getting removed. So I guess I was over target. <laughs> um, if you don't know who Somerset fell off is, please just look her up. I don't want to say too, too much about her because once again, I don't want to have this video also removed. Um, she's part of the Royal family. We'll just put it that way. Now she has a website called Glam's Calling. Glam's is the castle that she allegedly lives in in Scotland. Glam's castle itself has a lot of folklore and mystery and shenanigans around it. Um, I've done a deep dive into Glam's castle on the reveal report before. So if you follow the reveal, reveal report, you can go and get the whole scoop on Glam's castle. Now, Somerset Belenoff allegedly on her Glam's calling website, which I'm not going to pull up on here because, again, I want to be very careful about the platform we're on, but Glam's Calling, it's spelled Glamis, G-L-A-M-I-S, Calling, it's pronounced Glam's though, is a message board that allegedly Somerset Belenoff uses to communicate to the outside world. Whoop, Zoom, Michael, please come in and protect our Zoom. Thank you very much. Um, and there's some concerning footage on there. There's some recordings that are not that lovely. And she's super, super, super obsessed with the Pied Piper. Now, if any of the people watching right now are fans of music like I am, like Stephanie is, then you are probably familiar with a band called Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin wrote a song called Stairway to Heaven. In my opinion, it's a great song. And then you learn a little bit more about it. And it apparently was written for Somerset. Okay, the May Queen, she was born on May 1. And in it, it talks about um, the Pied Piper is calling you because Somerset herself is allegedly obsessed with the Pied Piper. And on the Glam's Calling website, she references the Pied Piper every anniversary of the event that took place in Hamlin, Germany in the 13th century, where the Pied Piper piped his little pipe. First, he got all the rats out of the town, and then he got all the young ones out of the town so it's very interesting and there's a recording on the website it sounds like pigs and they're like eating something that's all i'll say you can do your own research into that so stephanie and i have been chit chatting about somerset's connection potentially to some truthers now pied is a word that means multiple colors first i want to ask the cards is the pied piper 
an actual demonic entity that is summoned. Okay. Uh, Grimm's brothers, I believe, uh, wrote about the Pied Piper in their fairy tale books. I think most people are familiar, briefly familiar with this story. Two cards and I got a yes. Two cups with the ace of cups. So yeah, um, this is uh, actually making an agreement. So selling your soul. And so you have to do the devil's bidding then to lure yeah. people away through hypnotic. So the pipe is hypnotic, like black magic, right? Like the tapping of nails. Okay, multiple colors. My next question. Are there truthers, said truthers in our community, who are either incarnates of the Pied Piper or are working for the demonic entity of the Pied Piper to lure people away from higher consciousness, from ascension? Jeez, these cards are flying like violently. My cards have been flying. You know, earlier today I was pulling from my light series and they were like talking to me, like quickly talk. Spirit was like. Um, yeah, that's. Yep, absolutely. Okay. High Priestess card. So there's definitely secrets um, <clears throat> within the community that are being kept. Um, this is, uh, this could be classified as luring. Um, this is a fight card. Um, so fighting for um, getting people off of their journey by using some black magic. And um, making the, the road, the journey go in a different direction than where they should be. And then endings. So, so they're getting rising people. Yeah. It, 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 so essentially there are YouTubers out there that have disguised themselves as truthers, according to the cards, allegedly, according to the cards, Ace of cups. Yeah. That are dressing like the pot that are serving the Pied Piper who are luring people using black magic to hypnotize people into what they're saying to lure them away from the truth because they're working for the dark side pretty much is what, okay. That's what I thought. We're just going to leave it at that. I'm just going to say guys, excuse my language, but please, 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 please pay the fuck attention to who you're following. Do not hear. If you're word. idolizing somebody, odds are they have some sort of juju over you. Yeah. You're being, you're, you're being idolizing spell casted. Do yeah. not idolize, do not idolize, idolize Stephanie or me. Do no. not hero worship. Do not take anything anybody says as fact. Use your critical uh, thinking skills. If something feels wrong, it probably is. Pay attention to what people are wearing on the screen. Pay attention to clicks with nails. Pay attention to people who say what I say is true. 100% because... Most of us are just doing research and we're speculating and we're using critical thinking. Like Stephanie always says, take what resonates. I could be wrong. That's what most divinators will tell you. Okay. I'm 100% okay with being wrong. Same. I've been wrong lots of times and I will continue to be wrong lots of Same. times. Same. And I'm okay with it because I'm a human. This hit me because um, something happened. I'm not going to go into detail about it because I can't. Uh, but Stephanie and I were talking the other night and there was a huge connection made with someone in Somerset Belenoff. And that's all I'll say. And that's when I was like, holy shit, the Pied Piper. And so, well, let's just ask this. Are these people, these truthers, I'm not going to say how many, are they working for Somerset? Are they her Pied Pipers at this, but did they make a deal with her? As I pull the high priestess and the ace of cups. <laughs> Can't make this up, guys. I mean, the cards I'm getting are just... This is rough energy. Oof, I gotta save these after. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I mean, I pulled like 10 cards. I mean, it's all yes. Um... I'm taking the lover's card as literally, that's like two of cups. 
they made a part. This is a, but this is a major arcana. So this is like permanent contract. Um, this is theft. This is working for to get people away using magic and as fast as they can. And working for, <coughs> that's family. So these could also be family members of her, extensions of possibly. Of this club. Blindsiding people. Yeah. I mean, take, take what resonates, guys. But I mean, I, I'm fe Hierophant. Yeah. Okay. There you go. All right. So, um, so, okay. So are these people being rewarded with money, with making lots of money? We're not doing this to uh, gossip or anything like that or make anybody worry. We're just wanting to open up everyone's eyes, right? You do your own. Use your you need to ask this guy, Do not ask us who this is. We're not going to tell you. Yeah. It's probably more than one person. What we're asking. And why would you ask us anyway? You have a direct line to God. Yeah. When you feel that feeling in your stomach that something's wrong. That's God. Talk to God about ask God to show you. We just want you to pay attention. Do not follow people blindly because we know from what we've learned, majority of people who they say they are, are not who they are. We've learned that over the past two years. Do not replace yeah. Anderson Cooper with a truther that you think is good because they told you they were good. So are they being rewarded with money? Oh yeah. The world card. So with the seven of cups, which is chaos confusion so it's like they're stirring up confusion to make it look like they're not stealing um but i get the ace of pentacles so that's an automatic yes so it's like and pentacles are money by the way yeah can't get more and it's like distraction 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 while the world is watching son of a bitch yeah are these people going to be exposed and and called out we know that one domino fell for one person. We got that news today. Are we going to see more dominoes fall with this little house of cards, this, this image illusion that they've created and spell casting people to try to get them off their path to hijack this movement? Hard to speak louder than words. Surrender to. They need to surrender and give up their contracts. And then, yes, they'll be exposed for who they are. Contracts exposed. Yes, yes, and yes. Oh, and their magic. So just one more question, then we're going to move on to some other stuff. Is this the same group of people that's put death spells on me and has uh, been fucking with me? I mean, I automatically get a yes, I feel like. Well, let's check. Same coven. I already, I, I already know the answer, but let's just check and see the cards. This is the same coven. So at the world card in that last reading with the hierophant. So this would be like a coven of hierophants or coven of black witchery who decided to take action. Show themselves as loving, but are not. And then the wheel of fortune. So, cause you're, you're protected. You're protected. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I'm so yeah. protected. I know, and I know, it's I know another death spell was just put on me. Like I got notified. I know they put a spiritual head on me again. It's getting old, guys. Like it's getting old. You, you can't, you know. Listen, I, and I know why you're going after me. It's because of my connection to Mary Magdalene. I get it. It's not going to work. It's actually kind of funny because one of your dominoes fell today, and um, you picked the wrong entity to sell your soul to because kind of stupid, kind of dumb. Because if you read all the prophecies of all the spiritual books, the probability of us going 40 positive is inevitable. And so you fucked yourself. Have fun explaining this to your audience that you spell casted. Have fun explaining this to God. Again, it's, I don't worry about the judgment of this realm. It's the next one that you're going to have to, you're going to have to account for. Karma is real. All right. Anyway, just people watching, we love you all. Just please be careful. Please, 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 please understand that magic is very, very real very real but you can control that you can control that you just have to check yourself you have to make sure you have to look for the signs if something doesn't feel right it probably isn't right all right 
Okay, now let's move on. All right. So a couple of weeks ago, I went on to Aquarius Rising Africa and talked about the Devil's Letter. I did a full breakdown of the Devil's Letter on my channel a while ago. And guys, I will put in the description box below my full video on the Devil's Letter from about a year ago. And I will put a link to the Aquarius Rising Africa video about the Devil's Letter as well. So just a brief synopsis, just so we know what we're talking about. So the Devil's Letter was a letter written on August 11th of 1676 in the co uh, convent of Palma de Montequiero, which is in the island of Sicily, which Stephanie has heritage in Sicily. Now, the woman who wrote the letter was a woman named Isabella Tomasi. Isabella Tomasi was a direct descendant of Constantine the Great. Her family actually built the money to build this convent. This letter went untranslated for uh, over 300 years. It just recently has been translated by um, the Ludum Science Center in Sicily, and they used the, the dark web to do it. They found in a program that governments use to decode things, and that's how they were able to decode this letter. All right, so again, Isabel Tomasi, she, uh, the bishop took interest in her when she was 15. They sent the Jesuits to like examine her, which nothing good comes when the Je Jesuits come to visit. She showed signs of being like possessed. Um, I believe personally she was disassociating because of ABUSE. However, I'm not going to ask about her because I want to respect her privacy. The first thing I'm going to ask you about to look at this letter, um, can we look at the convent of Palma de Montequiero? Is there anything that the cards want, or God's spirit wants to tell us about this convent? Is it evil? Is it good? What's going on? <clears throat> all righty so i gen i just did a general asking about it and uh it's coming up with some stuff that's actually present day so i mean it's abandoned is that true i think so i'm gonna put pictures up guys when i go through the editing it might be like a museum now okay let me look up um keep going while i'll look this up okay um I feel like not everybody can get in there though. This is, it's almost like reserved for special people. Good or bad people. You decide to choose on that one. <coughs> um, and uh, I feel like it's at one time it might've been a good place and then turned bad or was bad and then turned good. Um, that could even be recently maybe turned good. Maybe it's now a museum. Um, I feel like this is like it's maybe the family held on to it because of their, you know, their fortune and everything. It's almost like there was a possession over this um, property. With well, the they were Pentecost. legal landlords. They were, they're literally part of the club. I mean, they're descendants of Constantine the Great. Yeah. It goes into like the two of swords. Only, only club members can get in. But it looks like it's going to be stepped away from. So it's like uh, they might make it into something good going in the future. However, if if enough bad stuff happened there, they might just destroy it. But you know, it's whether that means destroying it or whether that means turning it into something good. Either way, they're walking away from the old. So I guess my next question would be, if this is only open to certain members of the club, we'll say, is this, was this from its conception? Because I have a feeling from what I know about this story, I have a feeling it's bad turning to good. They're try probably trying to cleanse the space. So was this convent used as a place for rituals? We'll just put it that way. So I get an ace of pentacles right off the bat. I feel like it was men that were doing the uh, rituals yeah was that emperor nuns. card the nuns i mean the women that live there and they, they <laughs> come into them yeah mm -hmm. um looks like military has actually been there that's my military card so i feel like yeah um but yeah i'm, I'm getting yes oh and by the way the military was next to the justice card so it is going to take a turn um but yeah they absolutely did those things. And I think it was like, 
you know how like Bohemian Grove was a men's club thing? I'm almost gathering that it might have been like a men's club thing, like similar to that. Okay. So are they so I'm assuming that up to the point where uh capitulation happened, that was still being used for the purpose of religious activity, we'll say not the good kind of religious activity, but the nefarious kind. All right. Any religious so. activity good, Bryce? Yeah. <laughs> It's none of it's good. None of it's good. I've um, been through it. It's not it's good. good. All right. I don't want to ask too much about Isabella Tomasi because I actually feel sorry for her. I feel like she was just a product of, of these yeah. the system. Um, and, but this letter that she wrote that people, first of all, when I first covered this story a year ago and I expressed this on Aquarius Rising Africa, I had a very different opinion than the one I carry now on this letter. But that was before I had learned that the story of Yahshua with the crucifixion wasn't actually probably not true. Um, so that, and you understand that Stephanie. And in this letter, from what we understand of what's been, well, first of all, let, before I even get into what the letter says, what we think it says, can we ask if the Ludum Science Center properly translated this letter? Yeah, I feel like it was good people that did it because this is like future. Um, yeah, I get an ace. Okay, so this is going to lead me to my next question. So basically the letter, I'm paraphrasing, if you want to read the full extent of the translation, you can find it. But it basically, um, she allegedly channeled it from the devil. And it said that uh, Jesus and all this stuff, they were like dead weights. And she talked a lot about sticks, S-T-Y-X, like the band sticks. And how, you know, in, in mythology, it's the river that separates like the living from the dead. Like it's like the veil, basically. So she talks about the veil. Now, when I first read this letter, I thought that this was a nefarious le letter. But my second time reviewing this case for Aquarius Rising Africa, where I've learned more about the real story of Yahshua, I'm, I kind of came under the opinion that it wasn't channeled from the devil, that she disassociated and she was trying to tell the truth that the story that they fed us in the churches was to keep us in bondage to Lucifer because the crucifixion wasn't real. It didn't happen. So um, why, why would a good God demand a human sacrifice? That's what Lucifer does. Not what I, so that's my question to the cards. And when she talks about sticks, I think she is actually talking about the veil, the veil thinning. And that might've been her vocabulary at that time in the 17th century, where we call it the veil. They might have referred to it by the mythology of sticks. So um, it's kind of like the stick song, the band, the grand illusion. It's all just a grand illusion. That's kind of the perception I took. I took a year later rereading this. So my question for the cards or for spirit is, can they give us any indication? Was this actually the devil or was she disassociating and trying to tell people the truth of what the Catholic church was really doing to liberate people? So basically was it the devil she channeled or was it God? She channeled the real God. Okay. God. Temperance card. Yeah. And uh, he was actually quite generous with giving her the information too, but she was definitely dissociating with that uh, five of swords right there. Yeah. And um, she had a tower moment in order to get to that point, which is so true. So a, a lot of times when I, I almost left this uh, zoom, sorry, I hit something on on the, the thing um i um had a little bit of a tower moment back in july of last year after getting in an argument with a family member and it's weird because i cried i cried i cried and suddenly i was able to channel god like super like tenfold afterward it's really weird how that works out but it's like it goes back to the whole purging thing i had to purge out a bunch of emotions and then suddenly God showed me like this really vivid vision of new earth. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't want to leave it. It was such a beautiful vision, but yeah, your antenna sometimes goes like tenfold when you have them enter tower moment. I feel like she had a tower moment, like a come to Jesus moment. Mental breakdown. And suddenly was able to just be a, a good conduit and to get the information. That be okay. Yeah. And so guys, she entered the convent <coughs> when she was 15 and she wrote this letter when she was 31. Now we don't know what her life was like before 15. If she was born to a, a feudal family of Italy, that was descendants of Constantine. God knows there was probably already rituals happening to her before 15. But if we just take it at face value and know the Jesuits visited her at 15 and she wrote this at 31, she had been going through this for at least 16 years. That's enough to disassociate anyone. 
And um, when I, again, the second time I read this letter, I was like, she's telling us, she's trying to tell us that the story they're telling us in the churches isn't true. And that it's, 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 it's shackling us to Lucifer. That's what she's trying to tell us. And that, that was my, because again, I'm going to put both links down in the description box below. If you watched the first one I did a year ago, I thought this was a nefarious letter, but a year later, I'm seeing it in a completely different light. I know I don't want to ask about her because we don't have her consent, but the one question I will ask is, is her soul now resting in peace? Because I feel my heart goes out to her. Like I feel so much pain for her. God bless her. And we can see how the powers that be manipulated this letter to make it seem like it was something nefarious when it was actually, that's okay. When it was actually telling us the truth and, and it's supposed to liberate us. I think that that lifetime evolved her journey and soul evolution big time. I think that was just, she incarnated during that time, I think to, specifically for the letter. Um, So her soul took some time in solitude. Um, but she, she learned a lot from that lifetime and she became the empress. So it's like, um, I think she leveled up hardcore during that. And just for the audience, I'm not channeling her specifically. I'm channeling God. Yeah. Well, I want to make that clear. I'm not. Is she, is she back now in this life? I'll ask in a second. Uh, this was a temporary yet very painful lifetime for her. But, um, yeah, the Empress card. I think I'm not getting she's actually in the spirit realm right now. So she's I back. think she incarnated. So let's ask that. Yeah. All right. Sora says... She come back incarnated for this period of time. Wouldn't that be funny if she incarnated and is actually was the one who find the letter? Who who uh, translated? Well, apparently when she was alive, she could translate the letter, but she wouldn't. When she came to, she wouldn't. But I think they scared her. I think they literally manipulated her and scared her into thinking it was something bad and that she was damned to hell. We know what the church does. We know how they do. So um, to, leave, to, to live off of that loosh, that fear. I think she's one of the 144 that came down. 144,000 light workers. Look at the Empress again. She probably is just a very ancient evolved soul. Um, she's had, this lifetime has been rough for her too. But these two cards, five of pentacles, five of cups. So blessing in disguise. So she probably, I mean, that's been our life too. It's been rough. We've had hardships and everything. She is certainly a star seed. Can I, are you, can I ask a question? We can cut this out if you want me to. Are you, were you Isabella Tomasi? Was I? We can cut this out if you want me to, but I'm just being prompt to ask. Was that one of your lives? You're a channeler now. This is weird. Did not expect that one. <laughs> I didn't expect to ask that question too. I just got prompted to ask that. I mean, I can pull two if you want me to. Go for it. You're going to have to do the reading on it because I'm not picking up anything really. Well, I'm thinking possibly. All right. So I've got the Ten of Cups to the Two of Pentacles to the Knight of Swords to the Three of Swords to the Temperance. Since we're channeling myself here, I could just use my pendulum. Okay. Let me just clear it. The pendulum picks up on your own energy better than anything else. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, 
I've been prompted. I was being yes. prompted to ask that while we were reading it. So tell me no, no. I'm asking it to show. I'm showing the audience. So in a circle means no. Back and forth means yes. Okay, thank you. Was I Isabella Tomasi in Sicily who wrote the Devil's Letter? <laughs> Am I the incarnate of Isabella Tomasi? Thank you, Spirit. I was getting urged. I was getting poked to ask that. So that explains why you're such a good channeler. It also explains why you don't take shit, too. It also explains when I found out about the rituals, I took it personally. Yeah. Like I actually went through it. And why you had the same kind of reaction to Constantine that I had. Just complete, just horror when you found out this guy who's been sainted by the church was a complete psychopath and is one of the, all right, let's ask this. Since, um, since you were of that family at one point, is Constantine's bloodline family still an active family in the club today? Generally oh. speaking. We know not all members. We know that there are many family members of the groups of these families that have left that are not, that are not psychopaths. So I want to make that very clear just because someone has a last name or just because someone is part of a family does not make them, make them necessarily bad. Every person is responsible for his or her own actions. 100%. Spirit doesn't want to say. Okay. Um, I'm getting... But potentially, but I have the high priestess and the devil. I actually think that um, they're not going any further. That's the future, planning for the future. Um, some of them might have redeemed themselves, like been breaking some karmic cycles. Maybe that was part of my mission here, too, is to break some karmic stuff from past life stuff. Um, this is a love offering. Just, I mean, to had, clear, just to be clear, I don't think Isabella Tomasi ever did anything wrong in her life. I think she was totally the victim, 100%. So, well, if it was me, I sure hope so. <laughs> Do you want me to leave that part in about you being as that's fine? I could care less. Okay, all right. So, um, let me ask one more question about the island of Sicily. Okay. What's going on with that? Can Spirit tell us anything about the island of Sicily? Because that island has been fought over by the good guys and the bad guys for a very long time because of its position. And I the know only thing I know about Sicily is that my grandparents came from there and they have the world's largest lemons that make really good lemon jello. <gasps> and that's where I get my really nappy hair from. <laughs> Well, maybe you had to, right, I had to add a joke in there. <laughs> maybe you had to have Sicilian heritage in order to connect to that life where you were also a channeler. You also had gifts. All right. What can we know about Sicily besides what I just said? I think it's been under rule for a while from nefarious activity. It's been what? There's been a lot of nefarious activity there. It's a hot um, spot for the club. Yeah. Um, I feel like there are a lot of loving people there. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Let's you make know. that clear, guys. Whenever we talk about these countries in general, we are not talking about the people at all. Yeah. I feel like they've been under a dictatorship with their king of swords, even if it doesn't look like it. I feel like I think we all have been, in all honesty. <laughs> um, but it was next to the devil card. So, um, again, but, but going into the future, we have the sun and the wheel of fortune. So things are going to start to look a little bit better. And it's funny because I always wanted to go, lemonade. I always wanted to go visit Sicily, but there's so many times I've had people say, no, 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 it's a dangerous place to go. Lots yeah. It's got one of the biggest, uh, in my research got one of the biggest, uh, black markets. A lot of mafioso type stuff. Of course, that's New Orleans has a lot of people that immigrated from Sicily. Do what? A lot, of haunted, a lot of haunted places on Sicily too. Well, there's, speaking of Sicily, there's one more story I want to ask about that I wasn't planning on ask about, asking about, but I just remembered 
Um, let's talk about Rosalia Lombardo. Lombardo. Okay. No, I'm not her. <laughs> I don't know her. So she was born on the 13th of December, 1918 and died on the 6th of December, 1920. She was barely two years old. She is known. Actually, let me show you her pictures while we're doing this. So you can get a feel for her. Um, she is known as the sleeping abuse beauty of the Palermo catacombs in Sicily. And there is, I did do a story. We did cover this. I covered this on my channel and I covered this on Aquarius rising Africa recently. My channel is a while ago. All right. Her eyes open and close. Her body is still, it's super well preserved. They did a, um, MRI and her organs are all still well preserved. She was one of the last bodies to be admitted into the catacombs. So, um, first of all, and we speculated, so we had a lot of speculations on Aquarius rising Africa. First of all, one, one speculation is, is her soul entrapped in this body? Did they trap her soul and are they using the body for nefarious purposes? Cause catacombs are fucking weird. What's her name? Rosalie what? Rosalia Lombardo. The sleeping beauty of the Palermo catacombs in Sicily. Yeah. Yeah. I have the, um, the hanged man. So that would be the entrapment. And... I, I do feel like um, she's being shown love, though, regardless. Like, I feel like she's at peace to some degree with the King of Cups. And um, she actually is trying to communicate somehow. So I don't know what that means. She, well, but she blinks her some, eyes. Her eyes open and shut. That that's probably has something to do with it. <laughs> so, and then we have the High Priestess. So there are oh, there's a lot more to this than we know. So... Um, you know, of course, the powers that be tell us that the, the eyes blinking, it's just a trick of the lights, but it's not. She has very blue eyes. And so you literally see the eyelids, her eyelids flustering with the blue, the blue eyes. And so do they know do the powers that be know that they're lying to us about why her eyes are opening and shutting? Beautiful little baby girl, isn't she? Yeah, she is. Got that little face. I know, not even too. Are you even potty trained it too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Bryce. <laughs> Usually you are. <laughs> <laughs> my son was a year and a half. Well, my son was about two. He was a little slow at it, but. I think boys are slower at it than girls are, so. <laughs> they, they darn well know. They darn well know. Yeah, they're they're giving misinformation um, purposely. Um, they also know her soul is trapped, so they know her soul is trapped. Give me a sec. This is weird. I feel like she has something to do with a prophecy. Star in the Temperance card. That together to me is prophecy. Something to do with that. I feel like she's maybe she'll rise from the dead and help heal the earth. I don't okay. know. Well, let me ask the next question then. I what don't know. I can do wrong. This is she being suspended in time by the good guys or the bad guys? Okay. That would suck to be born in 1918 and it beat 2022, and you're still hanging out in your two-year-old body. Like that would that would be rough. Look at this picture. <laughs> the four swords. <gasps> you can't make this shit up. No, you can't. It's literally her. Yeah. Spirit is on fire today. Spirit's been on fire. You kidding me? Not just today. It's been every time we do a show. Some, some weird body. revelation comes up. Never it's all a moment with our videos, Bryce. Never it's all moment. It always goes in directions I never think it's going to go. <laughs>
that's what happens when you do videos with me, you know? It's, I'm good such one. a bad influence. I know, good one, Spirit. I see you, Spirit. <laughs> Spirit's like, no, I'm the star of the show. We're going to do things my way. <laughs> As I pull the star card. <gasps> I'm not getting an answer if it's bad or good. I'm just not. I, I don't even know how to read this. I'm so going to be this honest. It's a story that we just don't, we know nothing about. There is something yeah, I mean, are telling us. <sighs> I mean, it might be bad people because I get the seven of cups in there to cause confusion. So let me ask this: Does Mister is Mister T and the gang? That should be his rap band name, Mister T and the gang. Are they aware of this little Rosalia Lombardo? Yeah, I think so. I think they were blocked about it before, so this might be something that they recently discovered. And when I say recent, I mean that could be the last couple of years. Um. And I don't normally read this card like this, but I feel like, so the King of Wands, so King of Wands is like uh, a very intuitive king. I wonder if they have some sort of spiritual leader advisor on the team, which I know they do, that helped guide them to certain places around the world that needed attention. And this might've been one of them that's working alongside with the White Hats. And I feel like she probably was given into really good hands with that Queen of Cups. And then we have a new journey and the sun. So it's a positive journey. So, so either maybe the releasing of her soul or the bringing her back love. to life. So someone's there. I would think a motherly figure is probably there on off hours, like comforting her. Frank. I, just, I see that baby and I just want to hold her and rock her. That's a baby, you know? Um, okay, now last question before we move on to the Voynich manuscript. This, whatever is happening with Rosalie Lombardo, which obviously this is something that we don't even understand, is this common practice with all over the world with a lot of different human beings that have been mummified or whatever you want to call it, embalmed? Another card. I literally just pulled the Ace of Cups. You and that Ace of Cups, Bryce. It's my favorite card. Well, we know this. We pull that in tarot group every Friday, you know? Ace of Cups. <laughs> Never going to get old. If I ever get pregnant, you have to make a t-shirt with an Ace of Cups right on the belly. Send help, everyone. Send help. My poor child will be so embarrassed when they grow up and realize what that means. <laughs> I'm a grown-ass oh. woman, and I'm a little bit... <laughs> I mean, that's how baby Anyways, works. we get it. Yes. Yep. God, these people, the depths of their evil is just. Wait a second. I just had a download. Now, I'm actually going to be doing a, a new series on my channel coming up soon called The Truths of Star Wars because I'm a sci-fi nerd. If you go back to Empire Strikes Back, Han Solo gets frozen in carbonite. Everything is well preserved. He pretty much is in a comic state uh, of hibernation. They unfreeze. Like stasis? This reminded me of that. Like that, the that's giants what in stasis? So they put the giants in stasis? Yeah. So is that what they're yeah. doing? I think that's what they're doing. That's kind of a download of what I got. Because they're telling you in the movies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One more question. Sorry, guys. Before we get to the Voynich manuscript. We know that before... The Catholic Church was a thing with our more spiritual based faiths that all of our ancestors were a part of. They used to cremate bodies like no one was buried. That wasn't a thing. They cremated bodies. We know I know in India, that's what they still do. They take the body, they stump, they stomp on the skull to release the spirit and they burn the body. Is burials is ground burials or catacombs burials. Is that a way to trick people into part of their soul essence being still trapped in the body. Like I know all of a lot of us have already died before we've reincarnated. So obviously our soul moved on, but is some of our soul's particles still left in our old bodies and they're harnessing that energy for nefarious purposes. Does that make sense? Kind of creepy. I, that could that's... be why cemeteries are, are, are uh, oftentimes haunted. And why people get uneasy in them. If the soul if the soul is released into the heavenly realms 
after death, why would you get some of that soul left? Particles that are left in that cemetery. So yeah, that's a good question. Because before the convention of the Catholic Church, people were not buried. I always said, don't bury me. I'd rather be cremated. Same. I don't, I, and I don't, I think I said it for economic purposes because it's a lot cheaper. It's another money business, you know. The still casket is how, how many thousands of dollars? Oh, I know. That's stupid. Oh, like, I just, yeah, I would, me too. And then you have to sit there and pray over a body that no longer holds is alive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, but morbid. I love my grandmother and all, but I didn't want to see that. Oh, everybody in my family, except for my aunt who passed away of cancer, she was cremated, but and my uncle was cremated, but everyone else in my family is buried. So I, I get that. Well, I get an ace of cups. Going back to ace of cups. Get that dang ace of cups. That ace of cups loves me. Yeah. Tower card and a three of ones. So I feel like they weren't harnessing it just yet. I want to look closer into this. So give me a sec here. I just had a download. I think it has something to do with Book of Revelation. Well, the Rising of the Dead? Yep. Bingo. I don't know if they're yep. actually, I'm thinking they're not going to actually like rise like zombies. I think they're going to actually allow their souls to go to move on. The rest of the soul to move on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Wheel of Fortune. So, yeah, they were planning on having the, during, during this, their evil agenda, they were planning on harnessing stuff then look what just literally flew out of my deck go figure devil card yeah is it was it to feed lucifer to, because we know that lucifer can't create the spark of life so he needs to feed off human sparks they needed little particles in order to keep feeding him let's ask yeah. I was just looking for Lucifer to feed off. Well, that means that people that we were before that have passed away and part of our soul essence that still is going to be returned to us. Maybe that's part of getting the light body back is that we get our whole, our whole essence back. Dang, you're very intellectual today, Bryce. You're, you're thinking, uh, Cap is... <laughs> uh, as I'm pulling the cards on this. Death and rebirth, two of pentacles. I just pulled death and rebirth, two of pentacles, timeline switch. So the, the rising of the dead in Revelation is more about us regaining everything we've lost along the way that's been entrapped. Yeah. Oh, by the way, yes, it was for Lucifer. So, yeah, had something to do with that prophecy with that star card. And I, <laughs> excuse me, I get the moon card. Um, so it was very discreetly um, known only by the elitists. And... Um, Seven of Wands is fighting. I wonder if that was part of their zombie apocalypse agenda. Well, that's what they were going to do with the giants that are in stasis. They were going to wake them up and have them stand up and run and kill people. And, you know, yeah. But I, I think there is something about us getting, regaining all of our soul back from these past existence mm -hmm. we've had that they've entrapped particles of that. Yeah. All right. My Great. damn soul back. <laughs> give, me a, give me a back. That's mine. All right, so let's move on to the Voynich Manuscript, which I covered this Monday on Aquarius Rising Africa. So the Voynich Manuscript is named after Wilfred Voynich, who gained the Voynich, possession of the Voynich Man Manuscript in 1912. This is a very mysterious book with mysterious writing that no one can understand, no one can decode it. It has interesting colors, illustrations. Once again, guys, I'm just giving a brief summary. For the full episode of what it is, I'm going to link everything down in the description box below. But I don't want to beat a dead horse for those who have watched the episodes. So this book, they, they carbon dated it to around the early 1400s, so 15th century during the Italian re Renaissance. And all these alchemists could not figure out what this thing said. Now, when I look at pictures of the Voynich Manuscript, I see something very, very whimsical which I will pull up for you guys now. It does not, as we expressed on um, Aquarius Rising Africa, it does not seem to be something that is nefarious when you look at it. 
And so there are many speculations as to what this manuscript actually is. Yale University now has um, ownership of the manuscript. It was donated to Yale University in 1969, which we know Yale University is not good. And um, they have it in their library. Now, first of all, can we ask the cards? Is the mm -hmm. Voynich, Voynich manuscript a uh, benevolent piece of writing or um, malevolent? Is it good or is it bad? And both. Both. King of Cups, which is love. But then it must have gotten in the wrong hands with the Tower card. And now we have the moon and the death card. So I'm getting kind of yucky energy around that. And this card is blessing in disguise. So it, there must be an energy in that manuscript. That's okay. honest. Next question then. Um, okay. The writing in the manuscript, is that light language that's channeled from an off-worlder? Again, I'm getting mixed. Um, so is this kind of like a Rose, um, an Isabella Tomasi thing where whoever wrote, okay, let me, let me back up. Let me ask this question. Will the cards tell us, was it one person who wrote this book or are there multiple people who could? That's the thing. I'm getting multiple. Okay. See, the thing is I'm getting, so it's like, I get the seven of wands, which is fighting. So maybe it was fought after to write for it. And then I get the sun and then I get the devil. So it could be light language gone bad. It's okay. kind of like in church. I've sat in church with someone speaking in tongues and literally wanted to run for my life because I felt demonic energy through it. And then I've actually listened to other people speak in tongues, which if you do it properly is actual light language, which we do have a dear friend who does an amazing job with light language. So when you hear real light language, you do feel a very high vibration. It can make you emotional. Um, but that one time, it was like I wanted to run for the hills. And I've heard speaking in tongues in almost every church I've gone to except the Catholic church. But, yeah, it, it, it um, light language can go bad. Okay. It can be used for bad, yeah. So, um, so it's it, probably – go. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. No, go on. It's like – it might have came off like it was light language, but it could have been demonic language. Does that make sense? Yeah. I just feel like it was written by multiple people. So was Leonardo da Vinci one of the people who contributed to this manuscript? He was bad, by the way. I did a deep dive into him. He, he's the one that painted Cesare Borgia's painting. Yep. That it, the they were that. lovers. Yeah, if you missed the episode, so if you have a painting of Jesus in your house, it's not Jesus, it's Cesare Borgia. I'll actually see if I, I think, I think we have that episode still up on Rumble. So I'll see if I can find that episode for you guys if you missed the Cesare Borgia one and link it for you guys down in the description box below. Again, an Ace of Cups. I feel like he, it was a fight and struggle for him to write in this for, for some odd reason. Um, but he made a deal. We probably know what that deal was. Okay. Um, get the temperance and the judgment card. Temperance normally to me is angelic or heavenly realms and spirit guides and all that. But because it's next to the judgment card, I almost wonder if um, this is saying that totally forgot what I was going to say. Maybe spirit doesn't want me to say. Well, I was going to ask, are there spell, is there spell casting in this book? That's, that's what I meant. Thank you. That's what I meant. Speaking of spell casting, is this a book of black magic? Let's ask. And maybe there also, also is some light magic in there too. Yeah. The herb. Okay. There we go. Now yeah, let me, know. let me, okay, go ahead. Go ahead and keep pulling. I'm going to ask the cards because that wasn't a, I didn't shuffle asking the question. That just happened to be on the bottom of the deck. Is this a spell book? Black magic. And I pull the Ace of Cups again. I cannot get away from this Ace of Cups. I think you're like being told by the Spirit to reveal some serious shit.
If Yale didn't write the book. No, 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 but Yale has it now. That was going to be my next question. Why does, because we know Yale is the Spone, Spone and Skull and Bones Club. Death, death hexes. Do what? Death, hex, death hexes. <gasps> oh, really? And the Queen of Wands is sometimes my spell casting card. So Okay, so why? The but not only that, not only that. It's got love spells in it. So this could be spells for um, uh, spell casting divorces with couples, separating couples, separating twins. Sep Damn. That's why I'm, yeah. Making life really difficult for like couples. And um, they were given a lot of money by somebody high up for this manuscript. So this is circling back to the Pied Piper shit we were talking about in the beginning. What is happening? Girl. I don't know, like, I, guys, I could be 100% wrong. I'm just reading the cards. I'm just reading the cards. Well, why the fuck does Yale have it? What is Yale doing? Okay, what is Yale First reading? of all, Yale is in my neck of the woods because that's in Connecticut, by the way. And we know, well, y'all, I mean, if you think that Yale is clean or Harvard's clean. Just watch the Gilmore Girls. Now I'm like, now I'm embarrassed when people tell me they went to Yale or Harvard or any. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. It's embarrassing. Bless your heart. Bless your heart is so embarrassing. Um, so, okay. So what the fuck is Yale doing with this book? Are they using it or are they just keeping it in the library? Well, who went to Yale University, Bryce? All of them. All the big the ones. Bushes. The Bushes. Bushes yeah. went to Yale. The Carries, uh, the School of Bones Club. This is where it started. The world card does, popped up. Why does Yale have this manuscript? Well, the world card popped up for me, and I just got the hit to try to control the world. Their cabal is using it. End time. End times. End time agenda. Agenda. Yeah, they're actually really holding on to it. That's holding on to Lord. something. To go into their... <coughs> agenda and um the moon and the high priestess card so this book is not good no it was okay. to walk away from 3d God. to 4d okay. negative is what that is <laughs> And here's I mean, a little old us, me, just some girl from Georgia, you, just some girl from Connecticut. <laughs> and we're calling out Yale University. <laughs> All right. Okay. One last question regarding this. Uh, Ethel Voynich, who was Wilford Voynich's wife. She hey guys, hold on. Hold on. This was on the bottom of the deck. I think it was a spell book to usher in the Antichrist fertility. Okay, one more question then before I get to Ethel. Did they use the Voynich manuscript to um, do what they did at Notre Dame before it got by the good guys? That's kind of where I'm headed with that. Oh, damn. Not today, Satan. Not today. Fuck Satan. <laughs> Get off our planet. All right. So Ethel Voynich, she outlived her husband by like 30 years. Now, Wilford Voynich, where we get the name of the Voynich Manuscript, was the, the, the book lover that found this book and spent his whole life trying to decode it. Now, when he passed away, they didn't have kids. She took the manuscript and she locked it in a safety deposit box. And there was a note in the book. And she did not want that book open until after her death. Did she know what this book... Did Wilfred Voynich actually decode it? You know, they tell us he didn't, and she knew what it said, and that's why she didn't want anything to do with it. She did not want it opened, the hangman, because she knew it could potentially... Shady business going on. Yeah, she knew yeah, something, yeah. something of the world, the world card, along with it. It could... Do something with the world. Remember how I said in the beginning of this, there was good and bad in that book? Yeah. I believe there was still 
something good in that book. I'm actually getting maybe a part of it ushers in an antichrist and part of it ushers in the Christ. There's a duality in the book. Kind of like the Bible. Pretty much. You get the Old Testament, that's Lucifer. The New Testament is... Somewhat. Take it, with, take it with a grain of salt. I mean, it does have some truth in it. Um, and it potentially said something about our abundance coming to us in money. But whatever it was, it had something to do with the future. Well, there's snip, snip the hole just keeps deeper and deeper and deeper i know and i'm gonna say because we've been going for a while guys and um i am gonna make some notes here just so you guys know i think most of you might be aware when i go back and edit the video i actually cut out the long pauses where stephanie is pulling um just so you guys don't have to listen to dead air stephanie knows i do that um and so i know the video is always shorter than when we are filming it because i do cut that stuff out um, now, let me know, guys. So this is fun. I'm, I'm having fun digging through these old mysteries. I always say on Aquarius Rising Africa, we're like the boxcar children. We're trying to um, uncover some of these crazy stories. I love this series. Me too. Me too. Now, the next, this Monday, there's a Monday mystery that uh, I've already filmed that I can't wait to ask Stephanie about. Now, I'm going to ask you guys, if you're enjoying this, of us looking into these crazy, weird stories, um, Please, if there's any weird stories, you know, we don't want to get too personal, like I, we said, into any individual person, especially if they're still alive, because we want to respect the boundaries of consent. Um, if there's any weird stories that you guys want us to me to do a deep dive on, because researching is my, my thing, and then present it with Stephanie and have her pull the cards, let us know in the comment section what stories you have to tell me what you want me to look at. And, um, and I will go in. There are some stories I've already covered that we're planning on reviewing as well. Again, some old, uh, old Monday mysteries I've done and stories I've covered. Um, so, but you let us know too, if there's like a weird thing you know about, let us know in the comment section and I'll research it and Stephanie will pull on it. So yeah, thank you so much, Stephanie. Now, um, to close out, why don't we just do a poll to let people, what, what's the rest of this week? What's Easter weekend going to be like for people? Let's just to close out. Hopefully this is going to be something positive. All right. What's I'll Easter pull okay. Well, number one, there's a full moon on Easter and it's on the 17th. So there you go. Shit's getting good, guys. Shit's getting good. The hot mess, ex the hot mess express is here. Get your ticket. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> it never fails. <laughs> there might be some babies being made this weekend. <laughs> With the victory. All right, let me pull more. Sorry. <laughs> There's a passionate victory coming. Hopefully that means in the greater world. But for some of you, there might be a passionate victory in your bedroom this weekend. So... Take it how it resonates, guys. Take it how it resonates. Um, something to do with generosity, money, distribution. Or the bedroom. Take it how it resonates. Take it how it resonates. And then I got the death and rebirth card. I did too. I did too. I did too. Okay, yeah. What does Easter mean, right? It, it, it's supposed to be a resurrection, but yeah. no one died, so... so. It's still a rebirthing of something. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> so I get, I got the death and rebirth to the moon. To the four of cups. So the holding on to the old with the devil in reverse to the empire. Bye-bye, devil. Bye-bye. I have to carry it. Hard. Yeah. Oh, it's coming. Um, sometimes I link this with our off-worlders. I don't know. I'm just I'm just speculating here. Um, Ace of Pentacles again. That can go with abundance again. I'm just pulling off from the bottom, and then the Nine of Cups, walking away from the old to the new, which is what Easter represents. Bring it. Let's do it. 
So let's remember we don't go they don't go by dates, they go by moves, right? That's right. So that's, that's important to understand. Yeah. If we knew the that the day, the time, the day, and everything, the devil would know the moves. And so kind of goes into that whole biblical second coming of Christ. You don't know the day or the hour. Comes like a thief in the night. Ace of cups, baby. Ace of cups. Guys, help me. <laughs> Again, take it as it resonates. <laughs> have fun this weekend, guys. <laughs> that could have been your own private little reading of what is going to be happening in your house. There you go. So anyway, all right, guys, once again, please let us know in the comment section what you want to see us deep dive into and then divinate on. Um, and again, if you want to book with Stephanie, her contact information is down in the description box below, along with all of her channel information. So thank you so much, guys. Happy Easter to everybody. There will not. Yes. So this is being released on Thursday. My channel, there will not be a video on Friday or Saturday. And then Sunday morning for Easter, I'm going to release the love challenge video. Because I felt like that was appropriate for Easter. And then Monday Mystery, I have a, a video pre-planned. And Tuesday, I have a video pre-planned. And I'm possibly going to be doing some filming while I'm away as well. Because you guys know I can't stay away from you for that long. So, all right, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful Easter holiday. Please enjoy your time with your friends and family. Eat some chocolate. Go hunt your eggs. Make sure to have fun. Laugh and smile. Because that is something demons just simply can't do. All right, guys, we love you. We'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Bye.